How do you spot a witch? Is it the cauldron? The broomstick? The wrinkles? Or the unnatural beauty? We're here at the British Museum to find out. This new show brings together witch imagery from antiquity to the 20th century. The Halloween cliché of the witch begins here with these 16th century German prints. This one by Dürer is tiny, yet it went on to influence witch art for centuries. This elderly but muscular witch is riding a goat backwards. She represents a reversal of order, a world turned upside down. The goat is an aspect of the devil. Many elderly women living on their own were targeted during the witch hunts in Europe. If crops failed or disease struck, it was easier to blame a spinster. Even worse was when these independent women congregated. Balden Green's witches are preparing for a Sabbath in this print, and they're cooking up trouble in their cauldrons. The sausages on a stick on the left are deliberately phallic. Grian must have been familiar with the Malleus Maleficarum, a very popular German text at the time. It's insisted that a witch could make a man's genitals vanish into thin air so that he could see and feel nothing but a smooth body, its surface interrupted by no genital organ. It continues, all witchcraft comes from carnal lust, which is in women insatiable. There's an anxiety surrounding female sexuality here, a fear of emasculation. Thousands of women were accused of witchcraft and executed between the 15th and 18th centuries. The medium of print was partly to blame for this. In the 15th century, the printing press was invented in Germany, which led to images like this and books like the Malleus being circulated across Europe creating mass hysteria. These prints also reflect a Renaissance revival of classical literature. That's something that we usually associate with learning and sophistication, but the witch goes back to antiquity. Take a look at this stunning Greek vase. It represents the sorceress Medea and her husband Jason. Here she's sprinkling a potion over a ram in a cauldron. Medea had the power to restore youth, and this ram turned into a lamb after she cast her spell. By the 18th century, Goya was using the witch as a political weapon. These are from his satirical, acidic Capriccio series. And here he's attacking the irrational superstition of the Spanish Inquisition. They were active witch hunters the century before. He does this by conjuring up their most extreme delusions. Look at these two gossips here, about to devour a basket of babies. In England, Fuseli brought Shakespeare's weird sisters to life and in the process converted witches into pantomime drag queens. As Banquo says, you should be women and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. At the other end of the spectrum are the 19th century femme fatale witches, dangerously seductive and therefore just as threatening. This exhibit is a fascinating and revealing survey of male conceptions of witchcraft and female sexuality. So what happens when witchcraft becomes a source of empowerment for women rather than a cause of their undoing? To get a feminine insight, we're visiting the Victor Wind Museum of Curiosities, where nothing is quite as it seems. Here we are, surrounded by all things furry and skeletal, but the main attractions here are these fantastic prints by the surrealist Leonora Carrington. Witches appear across her works, and what she does is reclaim their spiritual authority. These prints are full of occult energy and esoteric symbolism. These two feature witchy figures emerging out of caves. 
liminal spaces between worlds where secret practices take place. Caves are also womb-like and feminine, and Leonora constantly reclaims fertility imagery and empowers it. So for example, the image of women around a cauldron often appears in her paintings, and it symbolizes abundance and nourishment instead of malevolent devilry. For her, the simple act of cooking was an alchemical practice, and image making especially was charged with ritual. Today, witchcraft is still going strong. It's known by a modern 20th century term, Wicca, and is a form of neo-paganism. Our final destination is Treadwell's esoteric bookshop, we're here to meet its founder and Wiccan High Priestess, Christina Oakley Harrington. My favourite spells um, are some of the quirky older ones that we don't do today anymore. One of the things about being a Wiccan is that you uh, all look at your own past and you look at the, the mad and, and engaging parts of your own history. Uh, so the spells that I actually do tend to be for healing, tend to be for ecological balance, tend to be for you know, the well-being of, of animals and homeless people. But my personal favourite is one that's absolutely tonto, so I'll read it out if I may. And this is from the 17th century, and it's a love spell. And uh, it's a love spell in the good old reconstructed f f uh, tradition. And this is from the old spell book. It says, the most effective love spell guaranteed. This will work without fail for women only. Take the toenails and pubic hair of the object of your desires. Kill a pigeon, remove its heart and slice the heart open. Insert your pubic hair and toenails and stitch it up carefully. Insert the heart into your privities and leave it there for two weeks until it begins to stink. Then remove the heart and burn it on the fire. Take the ashes and put them into the dinner of the object of your desires. Enjoy the benefits of their devoted attention. The spell concludes, this will work without fail. It is proven. It has all the qualities of a magic spell, which is connecting to the object of desire, uh, involving the heart, the, the affinity of a heart. It involves pigeons, which are all about love. It involves uh, conjunction of sexual fluids. And uh, it has that good old medieval uh, repulsiveness to our 20th century sensibilities. And uh, I, I can't help but adore it in its own context. There's no doubt about it, the word witch is still charged with negative connotations. Even today, the most ambitious and independent women are labelled witches simply because their power is considered threatening. And admitting you're a Wiccan to family and friends has been termed coming out of the broom closet. But I think it's time that we embraced our inner witches. Our world could do with a bit more magic.